Hi, how is everyone doing in this crazy world of ours? It's getting crazier each and every day. Area 50, well, first of all, welcome, thank you. Bruce Wartz here, studying ufology from Montreal, Quebec. We're looking at a bomb blast, a nuclear bomb blast. It's in Area 51, okay? So let's go see the moon. <laughs> like, do I have to keep talking? Anyways, we're, we're going to do the switch. So this is the one on the moon. Okay, that was a crater, and this is one on Earth that has like a, it's a bomb blast. But in the center, right there, you can see that there's white sparkling objects in the center of the crater, in the bottom of the crater, right there. Sides came up, blasted up. Vegetation a little bit around the edges of the crater, of course. Just like the craters on um, the moon. There is greenery around the craters. Doesn't mean it's vegetation, but let's look at the similarities. We've got a big asshole on the moon and a big asshole on Earth. Like, hello, you know? Look at the craters. They don't look like impact craters. They're all overhead. <laughs> We're seeing greenery around the craters right there. There you go. So, uh, a few of you have been mentioning to me about China being on the moon presently. Uh, well, the rover, anyways, and we're going to go see exactly where they are. This is the area. I'll get all the indication up. I'll show you what I've found on the surface in those areas all around Sinus Iridum. Um, one of the most amazing captures on the moon for me, anyways, seeing some of the structuring hiding inside some of the mountains. That's where they landed. Right there is the tip where I talk about Bianchini City. Just actually a bit higher up than that. We'll see the exact area I, I will show you where bianchini crater is also at the same time look at the beautiful colors isn't it incredible um the fuller the moon is uh, the less elevated the objects are so real quickly this is my um footage it's all my footage by the way it's just as one part i'm going to do a comparison with china's rumage anyways and yeah this is where they went by right here exactly what was indicated by china Jexa, and then veered here to go to land from what I understood. Now, listen, if for whatever the reason, you know, we find out that I was wrong about the area, well, my goodness, forgive me, but there it is uh, itself on the left, the green circle. And on the right, that's where the green circle is. And listen, I've been talking about uh, Sinus Iridum, Bianchini and everything for, for years. We know they couldn't land in Sinus Iridum right there. That's what we're going to go see all around it. But in particularly, look at the arrow. We're going to go see right in the tip where it curbs there with great detail. There we go. Don't worry, everyone. I'll show you exactly where we are. We'll back out. I'll get a point up and then we'll go back into it. But just look, this is in the point. You see the edge. Uh, the rim they're turning, uh, drastically changing shapes and the structure. So that's exactly where we are in what I call the apple bite, which is sinus here in Jura Mountains and everything all in those areas. And we see these lines, but not just lines, lines, elevated uh, platforms, higher and lower, the half connections uh, relaying themselves together, literally connected. And here, if you look through the Sinus Iridum Mountain, any way you can, you will see this line start to appear once you get in close, like a, a, an airport or a highway or something. Right, here's on the side of Bianchini Crater, and there it is in the image on the left, and I'll show you a real quick zoom up on that. On this side, there's something extra. We have all the platforms and connections, but um, here we have all these little specks, eh? Um, look in the center, okay? I'm telling you, in the center, it's not just bumps. They're following each other in a line of many hundreds of kilometers. It goes by Bianchini. Look up the size of Bianchini, if I'm not mistaken, 46. I could be way off here, guys. Uh, don't don't uh, depend on, on the size. But if I'm not mistaken, 46, for some reason, I'm thinking that size, if not 80, I think 46. But either way, <laughs> you can go check for yourself. Here's Promonturium at the end of Sinus Iridum, right at the edge of the apple bite which is just the, the opposite side of where China uh, landed because we're going to go see where China landed too. So that's pretty interesting. Here uh, are all the um, mountains, you know. Interesting that the Mayans also built in the mountains, right? 137,000 square feet, 410 kilometers by 265 kilometers is the area in feet, square feet of sinus iridum. It is huge, right? So if you know that it's that big, 
Um, what do you think of the connections? So yes, it's long enough that if it was here on earth that we could say that that was a tunnel over, overpass of, of a highway, okay? That runs for maybe um, 50, 40 to 50 kilometers, which is very, just, just one little edge. The whole point here is wider than that. And you can see very clearly, right? The arrow is pointing at smokes and hazes on the surface. The darkness, that's where the surface is. No one's ever seen it. Everyone looks at the moon, the gray moon, and it's not the surface. You're not looking at the ground level. Here's the UFO flying over top of the clouds, over top of the moon. Now, for me, it's an incredible thing because I imagine them, you know, China having landed exactly where I said uh, the city was. Uh, square craters, um, right where they that spot is, they're about 50 kilometers to 100 kilometers away from craters. Uh, uh, sorry, square craters, yes. Look at that. The lines going in the ground that bend and veer into the ground with all the tunnel system. It is definitely a tunnel system. Come on. Nobody can prove any different than this. Uh, it's, it's confirmed. Platforms are there, whether it be cement, eh, bright reflect, reflective surfaces, maybe it's metal, who knows. But still, when you look at this, there's no way in hell anyone can say that this is not constructed. It's 100% constructed. Now, these UFOs that I'm capturing doing directional changes do not necessarily, and I'm going to repeat, do not necessarily mean that they are aliens. But then again, it doesn't mean that they're humans either. It's, you know, I'm telling you, it could be both. Don't rule out anything. People will say, Bruce, drones. Yes, everything. But in reality, it looks pretty, I mean, that's a UFO in the sky changing directions, a directional change before my eyes. And again, seen with an infrared camera. Lots of lights are seen without the infrared camera, but these are not. And that's how we capture them. Lights appearing on the surface of the moon, uh, like here, uh, massive clouds, illuminating uh, clouds are reacting to gases. They are over the moving cloud on the surface. Everyone thinks the surface is the, the smoke, but it's not, it's this. Even here in the lights, Look in the center with what you're seeing here and everywhere. You have to look at this many times. It's a real UFO on the surface. Watch them appear in the lights in the center. They're moving around by the thousands on the moon. Not only are we finding out now that it's not a great reset, it's a great awakening. And more and more is gonna come out. So do you think this is possible now on the moon? Damn right it is. So very rarely uh, helicopters come by my house and planes too, you know. Actually, when they come by, you saw it the last time a big military help, uh, a big military bomber coming down really low under the clouds to go over, a pass over the house, which was scary as hell. I got the video up. But I zoomed up on this helicopter a lot to be able to see it properly. So I just want to share it with you. So I'm looking at the double wing at the back which um, I'm being honest with you, all military Coast Guard helicopters, I've not seen any of them, even in the States with the double wings. Is it testing for weather? Most likely, I don't know. It has a fly swatter on its wing on the left. We're gonna look in detail. It's a satellite or infrared, I have no idea. It's an important helicopter. It's not a common one at all. I'm very, I'm very familiar with the Red Coast Guard helicopters also. Uh, the Canadian helicopter team here has a lot of uh, Bell helicopters, etc. Um, I did get a look at the number underneath C1S, if I'm not mistaken. But here, check it, check it out. There's that what I call fly swatter rings here around. You know, there's a lot of added extra little things that you see. The two wings at the back also. Just wanted to share that. When I see something flying by in the sky that's uh, interesting like that, I said, hey, why not share it? And over on the right, <laughs> look at the blue sky at the back. This thing's sitting there, filled with snow. Looks like a joint rolled in the sky. You'll see it move around. It's pretty incredible. Look at the size of it. Coming from, obviously, I live near water. Spaceship in the bottom there, no. Um, yeah, like I'll say, like somebody says, I live, a, I live in Chernobyl. Yeah, it really looks like Chernobyl around here, especially with that beautiful sky. 
I did want to share it because once in a while, you guys and gals know it, sometimes a phenomenon occurs and it doesn't last long. So what's occurring? Here's the cool thing. I'll tell you why it was cool. There was a big cloud. Look, it's only over my house, guys. Something's going on. <laughs> okay. Look at the snow in that. Okay. So it formed. This is a cloud going underneath a large cloud as they met up. And this cloud, as it went underneath, well, you can see that's just so close to the trees. And of course, uh, being outside and breathing in the air, I don't know, you just feel the energy, you feel alive, uh, whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe it's poison, black clouds. I mean, look how thick the rain is, was ready to fall out. And this is what was going on. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Talk to you soon. Right? We can't, we can enjoy the, and appreciate the theories, but don't stay stuck on one given theory. If it wasn't for my amazing community, this channel wouldn't even exist. Thanks a whole bunch, everyone. I really appreciate it. Slow disclosure is in progress. More information will be coming a lot more. Houston, say again, please.